Hey, hey, Aldwin Alternay here. I am at Spices Retreat in the Hunter Valley and I'm so excited about today's interview. We're going to be chatting with the amazing Joanna Griggs, Channel 7 celebrity star. And would you believe her mum was my year <laughs> six teacher at North Bagala Primary School. And many, many years ago, we were both sponsored by MLC Junior Sports Foundation. I was an elite table tennis player and she was an elite swimmer in the Northern Beaches area of Sydney and we had a media training, my first media training at age 11. Was it your, your first too? Yeah, it would have been my first. Age, age 11 or so, around that age, at uh, Narrabeen at a sports camp. We were both in this camp together and here we are, 34 years later. <laughs> Can you believe it? And we've just seen each other now for the first time. I am so honoured and grateful for this interview. And we're going to chat with her right now. We are actually co-hosting the Almithia Science Fiction Book Launch today. It is going to be a fantastic event. It is sold out. Uh, and if you're not here, shame on you. Hopefully we'll see you. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see you at the Gold Coast event on Thursday. Here we are. Here's a bit of background over to Joanna. Isn't this stunning here? And whoa, around to you, Joanna. Hey, so Hello. great to see you again. And you I've been following you all these years. I've been stalking you on, uh, <laughs> in the magazines and on TV. And you're just so amazing. And you always got such a beautiful smile. It's so great to see on TV. And, and I just, I'm blown away by you. I'm so proud of you. And I'm so happy to be here so thank you for coming and for you doing this interview are so welcome even the other day when we uh, got on the phone to each other we just gas banged away for an hour and it just went like five minutes past and uh just lovely to hear and hear about what you've done with your life and um, you know, you're the coordinated one being from table tennis, I'm the hunko one being from the world of swimming on dry land. But uh, you know, we both share a passion for the environment and a passion for looking after our animals with as much love so it was just beautiful to connect and I just find life is amazing the way that it reconnects people and for us to have the connection through Amithia and all the beautiful people that are involved with it is just uh, amazing the synergy and the way it all works out. Absolutely and passionate about good news too. Yeah. Interesting how we both ended up yeah. in the media. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? And I left Sydney what 20 something years ago. I've been on the Gold Coast now. Yeah. So we're now living in different states and there's no state of origin going on here because uh, we are <laughs> well, we are all about good news as well and yeah. you, you put out a lot of uh, positive news stories with what you do which is brilliant. And in your hot little hands there we have the Almithia book. Oh, yeah. You know how excited I am to actually hold this and see the finished product now. Um, knowing that it's like 20 years of Aaron's life of hard work. So today it's going to be fun to be able to say to him, congratulations on your overnight success. Yeah. <laughs> for the rest of his life he'll hear that. But to think that two decades of just passion and dedication and perseverance and hard work that's gone into it. I'm so proud of him and yeah. uh, proud for him. And, and also the amazing team that he has around him, his wife Joyce, Josie, um, our late dear friend, uh, Greg Wilson, who is the reason that we all became such close friends. Um, it's it's a really special day for everyone. Because mm, you actually went out to their property, right? Is this how you met originally? Yeah, so I was profiling um, Greg. Uh, he's an was an absolutely brilliant artist and we were profiling him both for his artwork and the work that he does um, in the world of mental health or did in the world of mental health um, and also uh, the amazing Greg Wilson studio. Um, it's just such a beautiful property and so we were showcasing that and we just all got on like you could not get over it. We just yelled <laughs> like we've been mates for forever and a day. And uh, I say the way I describe it, I'll describe it again today, that as soon as you meet um, you know, when you met Greg and then you met Aaron and you met Joyce and you met Josie, you just get caught up in this amazing vortex of people caring and absolutely beautiful and generous and, and you just laugh and love and have amazing food and you know, <laughs> amazing experiences. So I, I feel like, um, you know, now that Greg's no longer with us, that the gift that he gave us all was this incredible one of friendship and, um, of, you know, of us all meeting and, and actually really striking up an amazing, extraordinary friendship. That's fantastic. And it's so great that you've taken time out today. And some of the proceeds from today, of course, are going to Beyond Blue. And can you let us know about your relationship with Beyond Blue and why it's passionate for you, this cause? Yes, so I'm a director in the board of Beyond Blue. I have been for um, about four and a half years. I absolutely love it. It's the work that I'm most proud of. Um, you know, I chair the National Advisory Council for the National Education Initiative BU, which is a single end-to-end -end integrated program from 0 to 18. And I mean, we all know the facts and figures in relation to mental health in this country. They're not great. Um, 
Yeah, there's more than three million Australians every day who are living with anxiety and depression. Our mm. suicide rates are off the charts. Um, in relation to that program, BU in schools and early learning centres, uh, the reason we're focusing on that is that we know that one in seven children will have experienced a mental health condition in the last 12 months. Um, we know that the suicide rates for five to 17 year olds um, are ridiculously high. There are 100 in the last 2018 reporting, so it's the leading cause of death in that age bracket. We also know that most mental health conditions have actually um, appeared in some way by the age of 14. So we feel if we can focus on that next generation, get them to understand what good mental health is, get them to know what to look out for in themselves and their peers and their families and their friends, um, know what steps to take, know what discussions to have, um, that, that ultimately the end result will be you'll have a generation of kids who think about their mental health in a way that they would their physical health. And it's amazing that people treat it differently because to me it's one and the same. You can't have good physical health without great mental health. So the, the dream is that we will have an entire generation who are not ruled by fear or stigma, but who um, who actually know how to look after themselves to, um, and the people around them. So I, I love the work that we do. I'm absolutely blown away that a percentage of the sales and the proceeds from our myth here is going to go to Beyond Blue. I know it's a, something that's really, um, Aaron is incredibly passionate about, as are um, Joyce and Josie and Greg was. Greg just used to do the most extraordinary work in this world right across Australia. He helped more people than he probably ever realised. And uh, so I think it's amazing that, that even with great success, is really uh, about to happen for Aaron and the rest of them that they, they're still thinking about helping others and, and I know I'm very grateful. Mm, they are phenomenal people, that's for sure. And, you know, Joanna, it's amazing watching your journey. I remember, you know, back in the, the Gary Sweet days, I remember the early days there with uh, with your ex and uh, and that whole journey. I remember when you first started getting into TV and then just seeing things flourish for you. What's it been like? So many years in the media now as a reporter. What's it What's it like? Uh, well, it's been 26 years now wow. since I got my togs. So I, I feel really lucky. I feel, like, um, I feel like I've always been able to work on such an amazing variety of shows. I've been able to do my live sport, which I love. Like next year, I'll get to host my seventh Olympic Games and wow. my second Paralympic Games, and and I love I love live. Like there's still something about live sport that is just it. It's the only thing that I think probably ever matches up to what it's like when you were back competing in the day. Um, and then I get to work on shows like Better Homes and Gardens, which are so positive. And it, you know, it's not about trying to tear any people down. It's about celebrating great ideas or great people or great initiatives or fantastic products that somebody or ideas that people have come up with. So you know, I work with great teams of people. I think I've reached a point in my career where I just, if I don't want to work with people or I think there's really negative people around, I just take myself out of the situation. Um, and I, therefore, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I, I actually go to work. I love going to work. Every week is completely and utterly different. You have so much variety and most of the time it's just a real privilege with the things that you get to see, the people that you get to meet and the things that you get to experience. So uh, I know it won't last forever but while it does last and it lasts for a lovely long amount of time, um, it's it's something that I'm just very grateful for and appreciative of. Oh, the Olympics would be phenomenal. Are there any really standout highlights for you in your career? I'm sure there's heats but any that really stand out as uh, the Paralympics in from Rio um, to be perfectly honest what we, we do is we love storytelling and the athletes um, that compete in the Paralympics aren't you know, not just exceptional athletes because they are, they're phenomenal athletes. I mean, we saw that in a couple of results of events in Rio that were actually equal to or surpass results in the Olympic Games. And I do love the Olympics, but they get so much attention and we, we are so much more familiar with their stories. Whereas I think the Paralympics, um, you do your research on every individual athlete and you were just constantly humbled. And you were forced to ask yourself whether or not you, you thought that you would be able to handle as much adversity with as much class and um, have that mm. mental strength and that physical strength that a lot of the athletes do and I'm still not convinced that I would be able to so I, I came away with just enormous admiration um, just the love of the storytelling the, the just the joy uh, of watching people just compete at that level um, and make it look effortless with all the extra challenges that they face so I think um, I've done a lot of amazing things and I've seen a lot of amazing things and been to a lot of amazing places but that for me was the one where I, I really felt like um, it, as if I could do that for the rest of my life I'd be happy doing that and that only. Mm. Now it's interesting I think of Paralympians I think of resilience Ooh. and I think of AJ Coots I think of resilience you know resilience is one of those things that 
you either have it or you don't, I guess. You know, there's a lot of people that do give up in life. You know, there's about a million people a year that take their own lives worldwide. You know, talk about depression, etc. You know, they, unfortunately, I guess they gave up on their resilience. They, they gave up on that, that, that will to live. And for those that haven't and yet have achieved such amazing things, you know, that is truly inspiring. And it, Look, I, I think moving. there's more factors than just resilience mm. that go into, mm. um, you know, the people suicide. I mean, I think there's so many mm. huge life factors and um, it's very complex as an issue. But, yes. you know, you're right, in 2018, the, the um, Australian Bureau of Statistics were reporting with 3,046 Australians took their lives. So mm. if you break it down, that's eight Australians every day. That's six men, two women. That's more than double our national road toll. rates like that we have to um, try to understand um, what it is and, and we do a lot of work we have an army of um, people with lived experience with Beyond Blue Cord, our Blue Voices Army and we've done a lot of research into a big campaign that we put out last year with six other mm. mental health organisations which was a hashtag you can talk campaign and some of the learnings that we got through that were that um, people who survived a suicide attempt never wanted to die right. they just wanted in that moment the unbearable pain and noise and confusion and fog that they were you know, felt like they were living with in that instant to end, without any idea or thinking through the ramifications of what that one decision could make. So if you if you really simplify it, it is someone's psychological distress in that moment um, is unmatched by you know the decisions, the coping decisions that they can make. And that to me, that makes me so annoyed because it's like you can. You can get to a place of much better mental health. You can get strategies where you can um, recognise when when you're in a state of such severe distress. So that if we can arm these people who are struggling with that sense of hope and with that sense that they can learn some strategies, then hopefully in those moments of really dire circumstances for them and really dire distress, that they can make smarter decisions. And mm. I mean, that's one of the driving forces of the work that we do with Beyond Blue. Is you, you just I'd love us to reach a point where we had no zero the number for the suicide rate yes. I and mean, that's the ultimate goal. Yes, yes and there are stories saying that the number one side effect of antidepressant medication is suicide too. Now this is a very controversial topic uh, but you know tablets are not necessarily the solution right I mean medication is not necessarily the solution it's it takes it, it is a complex issue as you say and you know what are some tips you would give people maybe that have depression or that are feeling really low what are some tips you can give them to help turn their life around well I think I think the thing is um, often I get asked that from people who are family members or peers or uh, part of people's support networks and, and the signs that they tend to look out for and you've got to be careful because you can't completely generalise in relation to this because there's a mm. lot of people who are suffering deeply that mm. are masters of disguise. They can put mm. up this amazing front where you would never have any idea. But if you think back, sometimes there can be little behaviour changes that, that you notice. So it might be that they're really withdrawing from life. Um, they might be um, really erratic and obsessing over things one minute and then completely defeated and deflated the next. You know, they might um, need an unbelievable amount of reassurance over the most simple things. Um, they might be self-medicating, so it might be drugs or it might be alcohol that, that you're noticing is all of a sudden sort of taking over their life. Now, we, we know for a fact um, getting people, you know, exercise, getting them outdoors, getting them connected to nature, um, connected full stop because isolation is such a huge factor. And, and you know, our lives these days are all about technology and it's all about, um, you know, emailing and texting each other rather than face-to-face -face contact. So it's about keeping people connected and it's about you know, keeping them talking and getting them out and about and not being judgmental. So if there's someone that you know who is distressed, um, the key that I have learned through my work in Beyond Blue is you don't have to have all the answers. There are mental health professionals who um, can help them, you know, and there are GPs who do play a role in, in being able to help them get the right sort of treatment. And I do think there's a combination of treatments. I think the treatment for every individual is different. But I think the key is... Um, is that you just be there for them, you let them talk, you let them tell you how they're feeling, you don't judge, you don't make trivial little comments about how, you know, keep smiling, things will get better, you'll be right, mate. Um, it's just a passing thing. For them, it's very real, and there's no such thing as an irrational thought. And and so uh, it's about just actually trying to support people and being there. And, you know, if I notice that someone's drinking too much alcohol, I will organise a breakfast or a lunch meeting to invite them out, and I'll go somewhere where it's not licensed. Um, 
um, or I'll suggest that we go for a walk in nature and just little little tiny things that you can do and and sometimes they don't want to do anything but just sit and and the thing is you learn not to try and project what you would do in your own life onto them but just try and take little baby steps and, and encourage them to get the right help. Um, a great thing that I've always done with people, particularly peers uh, I work with in media who are struggling is on our webpage we have these um, anxiety and depression checklists and you print them off and you sit down with that person and when they're at a point where they want to talk about it you can go through the questions, you can go through their answers, talk through how they've actually reached that, that answer um, and, and then Sometimes when you're just talking, you realise their perception and your perception are two different things. And they can take that checklist to a doctor who can instantly get them into the right amount of care. Our Beyond Blue forums are amazing. Now they're manned um, by mental health professionals and also by our Blue Voices Army, who have people with lived experience who know exactly what they're going through, so they're not going to be judged. Um, it's, a, it's just about trying to get them to, to realise, one, they're not alone, Two, there is a lot of support out there. They just have to know where to look for it. And three, there's a lot of people who, who will be there with them um, and help them along the way. Yeah, it's great. And Are You OK Day, of course, is a yep. fantastic initiative uh, that was started by one of the guys in Skunk Owl, yep. actually. And, uh, you know, just asking, are you OK? And, you know, simple things, being creative. There's lots of things we can do. I always say just by being born, you're one in a billion just by being born. You beat yeah. about a billion swimmers to get to the finish line, right? <laughs> so uh, we are extraordinary, you know? Yeah, and, and everyone finds their, their own thing. Like yeah. I find for me, like exercise is big. Mm. I'm obsessed with bees. I'm obsessed with my garden. Um, and I find those things have almost a, a meditative, um, relaxing trigger for me. So I know that yes. they're the things that I can do to look after my own mental health. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> We're talking about possessors before. That fly is very resilient. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing. You are a true inspiration, Joanna. And, you know, being passionate about what you do too. Passion is huge, right? Finding something you love and doing more of that, connecting with nature, as you say, getting barefoot and grounding yourself in amongst nature is really important. I love being on the beach, being from the northern beaches of Sydney originally. I love being on the beach now on the Gold Coast. And I think, you know, we're so blessed in Australia. We have, we have so much to be grateful for. Oh, yeah, we do. And, uh, and it's been just great to, to see your journey. Uh, what other words of inspiration can you share with us, Joanna? We'll wrap up this live soon. Words. Well, I can tell you that the man behind this is incredibly inspiring. And there's actually, when you when you read this book, you'll actually uh, notice, like, apart from the fact it's just this awesome, rollicking, rollicking fast-paced, amazing story that has all these battles between, you know, good and evil and light and darkness and kind of touches on different parts of Aaron's own life where um, he has faced his own demons. You know, it's, yes. it's got all those elements in there. It's got love and loss and it's sort of, you know, kind of a, um, you know, a bit about freedom and, and how important that that is in our lives. And uh, so if you if you are looking for total escapism and you're looking for a, a great read and it does touch on all those things that we're talking about and even his passion for the environment, it's all in there wrapped up in a really fabulous novel and, uh, and excitingly going to be turned into a movie franchise so yes, um, what can I say there's no greater example of not giving up in dreams than this book right yeah now. absolutely and now you've been a mother as well now I haven't actually had children all these years Joanna but what's it been like juggling parenthood and and your work your busy work life how's well, that been it's great I mean, my boys are uh, 23 and 22 now um, I've got a little grandson little 19 month old oh. grandson and to be honest there I mean you go through a couple of years through the teenage years and I think any any person in the world will be able to relate to the fact that they are not necessarily great fun for a period of time <laughs> but you get to the other side of it and uh, I mean I've been lucky I feel like a village has helped me raise my boys as far as my family who were right there from day one I mean I had to work and um, and I loved the work that I did and I think that that's okay you're allowed to say that you, that you love working um, and I think that they've grown up as incredibly well adjusted kind beautiful um, talkative engaging delightful young men so um, they're, I'm incredibly proud of both of them one's gone into sports media and one's gone into construction so I feel like they've gone off in both you know, parts of my life to rule my world. Um, you know, and Joe's an exceptional father and just loves being an uncle and we have this whole new dimension to our lives that, that we just never thought could be as joyous and everyone's always surprised that it is at the age that we're at. But, um, I mean, gosh, I had my boys when I was just turned 21 and 22, so it's funny how life sometimes oh, you know, follows in the same amazing. cycles. But, uh, 
yeah, I mean, I, I just feel lucky, I think, when you have your health and you have people around you that are good. It doesn't matter whether you're single, you're married, you've got kids, grandkids. I mean, all of it is, is about having good people around you. And I feel very lucky. I, I feel like I have very much the best of both worlds. I've got great family, great job, great life. And, uh, and you know, I think... Uh, we're very, very lucky. Fantastic. That's brilliant. So the Olympics coming up. What else is coming up for you? Uh, we have better homes just goes all year round. So I've stepped away from house rules um, and I'm really happy to have done that. But uh, yeah, better homes, we're, we've already started shooting for next year now. Um, that's, I think we going to get two weeks off a year um, from that. And then um, yeah, most of my other time around that will be the work I do with Beyond Blue and, and the preparation for the Olympics and the Paras, which really starts now as the teams start getting selected. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, big hello to your gorgeous mother, Lee. <laughs> She did, yeah. <laughs> she did tell me I was going to say it today in the speech, but she did tell me to say that she's very proud of you, Aww. that you always have somebody she had an incredible soft spot for, Aww. and that she she really is. She said she is always so fond of you, and so she just thought it was absolutely amazing that our lives were reconnected again. So. Amazing, I'm getting emotional. Oh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, she was always my favourite teacher. So It's amazing. Um, my mum taught for 38 years and the amount of people who, who have, have told I'm one of four, we get stopped all the time by people who, who tell us how amazing our mum is. Now, we obviously know that. We think she's like the true matriarch and dynamo <laughs> in our lives, but it's amazing how many people's lives that she actually um, impacted in such a, an incredible positive way. Yeah, oh, she's so extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous mum, gorgeous daughter, gorgeous family. Thank you so much, Joanna, You're for being so with welcome. us today. Any final words before I, I wrap up and bring bring it back onto my tearful face here? <laughs> <laughs> before you do one of these, work out whether you meant to look in the camera or yeah. I have no idea, so apologies for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. You're amazing and look forward to seeing you on TV soon. And we've got lots of people coming in saying hello and they love hello, you. Everyone. And, oh, and uh, so a really great response. Thank you so That's much, awesome. Joanna Griggs, the amazing Joanna Griggs. And now you're seeing my tearful face with makeup running down my face. Uh, we are at Spice's Guest House in the Hunter Valley and uh, very emotional when you talk about the past. And, you know, we've covered depression and and uh, suicide and some of you may know I've had depression over the years and had four friends who have taken their own lives and um, it's it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking however there's things we can do to help those that are still alive that may be suffering and uh, Beyond Blue of course fantastic organization we are here today to help launch the Almithia series and uh, it's such an extraordinary story and Aaron Coots, AJ Coots, congratulations. This is a six book series that's going to be turned into a Hollywood movie. We have Priscilla Presley involved, we have Cliff Simon from Stargate, we have people from Star Wars. Uh, it's it's phenomenal, phenomenal event. Uh, Bruce Logan, James Garnier, thank you so much to all our LA supporters. It's going to be huge. It's, it's out uh, they're tipped to be, well, tipped to give Star Wars a run for its money. So let's, let's just see. Six weeks from and Christmas. Like, if you're yes. thinking about a fantastic gift, whether it be for Chris Kringle or someone that you love, this is your opportunity. Get on board at and you can actually uh, order your book now. Yes, absolutely. Amithia.com. And we are going to be on the Gold Coast on Thursday. So if you're in the Gold Coast, we've got the Gold Coast launch happening. When she at, says we, it's a royal we. Well, I can't actually be there. I'm working yeah, on it. I know. It's such a shame. You'll be there in spirit. We're in spirit. Going to yeah, be, I'll be there in spirit. Uh, we'll be thinking about you, Joanna. At the Quality Hotel, Mermaid Waters, we have a live studio audience filming happening in the morning, 9 till 12. And then at night time, 6.30 p.m. onwards, we've got a dinner show. Dean Vegas coming, doing Elvis. He's the world's best Elvis impersonator. He's going to be, going to be coming <laughs> be along. Fun. And, of course, Cliff Simon from Stargate will be there. So come and join us at the just go almithia.com. All the details are there. We're on Facebook, etc. as well. So love you too. Thank you so much to all our live. Just say a quick hello, Roger, Nathan. Hello, Robin, Steve, Shah, Norma, Wendy. Wendy says so she loves you. Yogita, Simon, Pamela, Veronica. So awesome. Thank you, Rohini. Hello, Adam, Margie, George. There's so many of you. Thank you so much for joining us on the live and everyone watching the recording of this. It has been a real honor and privilege to be with the amazing Joanna Griggs and nice to reconnect again so after 34 good, years so good. and uh, her mum's gorgeous too hello Lee we love hello, you too Mama. Mrs Griggs always Mrs, <laughs> Mrs. Griggs, Griggs. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
<laughs> Mrs. Griggs. I was ducks at my primary school, believe yeah. it or not. And there's yeah. a photo of myself with Mrs. Griggs in the book no, Elevate no, Your Profile. Uh, if anyone's seen that book, there's a photo of us together. And uh, she's, you know, she she was amazing. She was definitely my favourite teacher. And and obviously she did a great job bringing you up too, Joanna. Oh, so I'm uh, the underachiever in my family. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's just amazing how the universe works and I am so grateful. I'm so grateful for you, Joanna, today. So grateful for Mrs. Griggs Lee, and so grateful for our Mithia and for the people that have brought us together here today and for the for the amazing book and series that's coming out. Check it out. It's such an honor and privilege to be involved with this project and uh, thank you to Beyond Blue also for all the great no, work. We thank you guys. We it's thank amazing. you guys and thank you for supporting watching this today. Any yeah. other final 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 words, Joanna? No, thank you for all the lovely words and comments from everyone. Really appreciate it. Yay. Thank you so much. Have a great day or night wherever you are in the world and remember to shine your light bright and light up all those around you. Bye for now. Bye.